Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. And in this video, I'm going to do something different in this news broadcast. And I'm actually going to talk about the headlines that dominate the news cycle and everyone is talking about, or aka the distractions and meaningless crap that have no impact on our lives. Plus, this is a great way to get a clickbait title that hopefully will get other people to watch because right after that mindless crap, we are going to be talking about secret troop deployments and everything that the war machine is hiding from you right now in the news. Putin and Assad reconnecting in the Middle East, which, surprise, is at the brink of war, self-named hacks being exposed as sexual abusers, and of course, very important updates on the corporatocracy. Okay, so moving forward, the number one story that I saw trending on Twitter yesterday was that Paris Hilton claimed that she invented the selfie. Yes, this was the top trending story, and, uh, yeah, yeah, um, she said she invented the selfie. Moving on. Also right now, we are seeing the clash of intellectual scholars battle it out on the public platform known as Twitter. As LeVar Ball, the father of some professional basketball players, and the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, are battling out on who should say thank you and for what, for some reason against each other. Yet again, another story that actually has no personal impact on anyone's life, but it's just a war of words between these two. As the father of a professional college basketball player, who was recently charged with shoplifting in China and faced 10 years. Donald Trump says he was the one who negotiated with the Chinese and was able to free three UCLA basketball players, which the father, LeVar Ball, decided not to thank Donald Trump for, with Trump responding that he should have left the students in jail. So yeah, that happened. Okay, now finally back to some real news. We are finding out that the United States quietly deployed more than 500 troops to Somalia, raising the troops level more than it was at any other time since 1993, with some vague explanations to what the US troops are doing there in their expansion of the war on terror, which is now being set in the theater of Africa. Putting our US troops in danger, for what? And this is at a time since U.S. war zone deaths have risen for the first time in six years. And with the expansion of troops in Somalia, the Pentagon has just stepped up its drone strikes in Somalia. Of course, a lot of this is done without any official announcement, with the U.S. mainstream media meaningly ignoring this, since at least I believe the Pentagon has lost the hearts and minds of the people who generally don't want more war, especially for very vague purposes. And it's important to note here that everywhere that the United States intervenes in, especially recently, there is an upsurge in terrorism because of that intervention, mainly because on average one in five U.S. airstrikes actually kill civilians like they do in Iraq, and with more troops and drone strikes in Africa, expect more terrorism to come from Africa. That's really all part of the business cycle of the war on terror, but that's too complex to get into now. Another failed war on terror news, we are seeing Russian President Vladimir Putin recently hold a surprise meeting with the president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, which of course will follow with a phone call to Donald Trump later this week. Week. An important update, as ISIS is destroyed inside of Syria, mainly because of the Syrian government and Russian backing, but still, none to which, the United States is still deciding to continue operations inside of Syria and hold their troops there, along with the bases that they have set up with the Kurds. And as that conflict ends, another one is brewing in Lebanon, where the army is on full combat readiness at the southern border next to Israel, because mainly of aggressive foreign policy moves made by Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States pointing their finger at Hezbollah in Lebanon with their Iranian connection. All of this while Israel, just a few days ago, started bombing the Syrian government which, by the way, was also working with Hezbollah to fight off radical Islamic Sunni terrorists and ISIS. And in Israel, there's also other problems brewing with the Prime Minister Netanyahu, who had police arrive at his home to question him in a corruption investigation. This is the sixth time this happened, and he's facing two corruption cases, and is being suspected of receiving gifts from wealthy supporters and seeking secret deals for favorable media coverage. Not really a surprise there. I mean, almost every politician does this. Also, very interestingly, the UAE came out also this week and said that Israel is like their brother. Of course, came from a senior general. As we're seeing the same geopolitical goals and aspirations being met by Israel and Saudi Arabia and the Arab states, who mainly see Iran as the main villain. Now, of course, Saudi Arabia is denying that their kingdom has relations with Israel. 
which of course is a bunch of hooey, not only from the secret cables that were leaked just a week ago, proving that yes, Saudi Arabia and Israel are working together, but most importantly, from all the joint actions that they took together strategically throughout the last five years that we've been talking about on this channel. More lies and propaganda, similar to what we've seen by The Guardian and The New York Times that have been painting Saudi Arabian dictators as supposed visionary reformers, which by the way, the mainstream media has been claiming for 15 years that Saudi Arabia will finally reform form from radical Islam, but yet continue to fail to tell you about how Saudi Arabia is financing schools and mosques that are Wahhabists all over the Western world, where the majority of terrorist attacks come from and are influenced by which they're still doing, by the way, but the mainstream media does not want you to know that. All of this while the U.S. media is completely whitewashing, suppressing, and concealing the United States' role in the humanitarian crisis that is being caused in Yemen right now with their main chief ally, Saudi Arabia, that is literally causing one of the worst famines in human history right now, while they block off ports and aid to a population of about a million people who are on the brink of death because of starvation and cholera in that region, a real humanitarian crisis that of course the media does not want you to know is being done with your taxes and with your president Donald Trump. So what has this expanding war on terror produced? Well, more mass human suffering as we're seeing right now in Libya, where new disturbing video came out of a real life slave trade where human beings are being bought and sold in the open for as little as $400. By the way, Libya was a functioning state before the United States and its NATO allies decided to, to liberate them with bombs of freedom and democracy. And now it's a failed state with massive sectarian violence and human slavery, all paid for by you. Thank you, Obama. What else has the war on terror produced? Well, just the evisceration of your rights. As USA Today puts it, federal groping on steroids, which by the way is not making flyers safe, will be instituted and is being pushed by Donald Trump during the Thanksgiving travel season that's gonna be happening very soon. Oh yeah, also a city in the United States, Baltimore, is now under lockdown as police have declared martial law after a police officer was shot and murdered in that city. That of course is impoverished, has many racial divisions, and has seen riots that I personally covered just a few years ago. And now in related news, US President Donald Trump also ended the immigration protections for Haitians who were displaced by the 2010 earthquake, a decision that will affect on average 60,000 Haitians who are still living in the United States under these protections and who in the last few months have been fleeing to Canada to have a better immigration status as we covered in this video, which will be available in the description below. And now the really disturbing part of this broadcast where we talk about sex abusers and pedos. And these stories are incredibly hard to keep up with, but we're gonna document as many of them as we can for the record as it's coming out that almost everyone in the upper echelons of society, whether a politician, a journalist, an actor, a media mogul are all being exposed for their illegal and inappropriate behavior. And today's accused sex abuser of the day is the New York Times star White House reporter, Glenn Trush. The man who actually was exposed through the WikiLeaks releases, saying himself that he was a hack and pretty much asking the Hillary Clinton campaign what he should write. And now four women have described him unwantingly groping and kissing them with very hazy, disturbing sexual encounters with him. While, of course, he's still married. Oliver Stone was also just accused of sexual harassment by an actress during the audition for his 1991 film The Doors. Bill Clinton, of course, no surprise, is now facing new accusations against him for sexual assault by now four women who claim that Bill Clinton was working with a billionaire playboy and flying on his private jet, which he nicknamed, supposedly, which he allegedly nicknamed Air Fook One. So this story is definitely becoming more interesting. We also have Michigan Congressman John Conyers, who we recently find out settled out of court over complaints of sexual misconduct in 2015. Again, having an affair and touching women inappropriately while using congressional resources and making sure the women sign confidentiality agreements in exchange for cash so no one hears about the story. Also in the news is Charlie Rose, who, by the way, I had many interactions with. If you get a chance, just Google Charlie Rose and We Are Change and you can see me chasing him down the streets, asking him what happens at the Bilderberg meeting and him being completely mum and freaked out and running away. Just YouTube, we are change Charlie Rose. So Charlie Rose is now being accused 
by eight women of nudity, groping, and lewd phone calls, to which he responded by saying that he is greatly embarrassed, showing some guilt there. That's probably because the allegations against him are very humiliating with what he is accused of doing, especially getting suddenly nude in front of unsuspecting subordinates that he was working with. So yeah, expect a lot more of these stories to come out soon, since as we've been saying, this is only the beginning of what really is a big huge social shift against the people in power who think that they could do anything and get away with it just because they have money. That now, mainly because of the internet, is changing. And now, moving forward in the latest corporatocracy news, we are finding out that Uber just dropped one billion dollars on driverless cars moving forward to their ultimate goals of having no drivers at all and having the automation of robotics taking over the taxi industry all over the world and since goldman sachs and google have a share of uber um I really hope that doesn't happen, but it ultimately looks inevitable. At the same time, Amazon in their expansion and automation with robotics in the not so distant future is set to destroy major working industries and other competitive companies, totally shifting our social and economic dynamics. As by the way, the owner of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, does cooperate with the CIA, is about to get a couple billion dollar contract with the Pentagon gets government hands out grants and tax incentives by also getting positive PR by the news organizations he owns and in my opinion is set to become the next ruler of the technocratic state in the United States. But that's just my opinion. Also, today we are finding out that the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, is set to totally repeal net neutrality rules very shortly, which would change the entire landscape of the internet. Since, you know, it will allow more corporations to become more powerful and have a stranglehold on the competition like me. And if that wasn't bad enough, we are seeing Google now play politics with officially announcing that they will de-rank RT, the Russia Today news organizations, to make them harder to find and that they have less visitors to their website. Now Google, of course, a company that many people consider a utility because they are so integral and important to our daily lives and now will be the determining factor on what news you see. Now, very interestingly that RT is targeted and not Al Jazeera, which is financed by big Arab oil money, or the BBC, which is financed by the British government, or even any other organization, but RT, which mainly kind of slants on the left, but ultimately is very anti-authoritarian when it comes to American politics. So yeah, a lot of hypocritical double standards here that scare the crap out of me, because ultimately if Google decides that you're done for, you have absolutely no chance to survive in the news and media business. And with them playing politics on what they see acceptable and not acceptable, this only of course raises more questions and concerns moving forward in this media landscape that the global elites have been clamoring around doing their best to suppress the information that makes them look bad. But before you crap your pants, just know that we're living on one tiny dot, a grain of sand compared to the entire universe. That is a magical place that created us with organic matter, filled with many mysteries and wonders, and there's many cool things happening, like this mysterious object that was just confirmed to be from another solar system that was found on our solar system, with scientists suggesting that it carries organic molecules that are the building blocks of life. So yeah, it's not all bad. We got some cool stuff happening up in space. Down here, we, we got some stuff to work out. And if you agree, share this video with your friends and family members. And as we faced a monolithic corporate takeover of free speech and the internet, just know that it's mainly your donations keeping us running and being fully free and independent for these broadcasts. And that without you, I wouldn't be here. And that's why I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.